Okay guys, so I am back with a different video today. I'm doing a Q&A. I put out a call on Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and I was like, hey, ask me questions and you guys did. So I am going to answer a couple of them today. Okay guys, so when I put out that call for questions, um, I didn't expect to get the awesome amount of questions that I did, so thank you guys so, so much. Um, you can always leave me questions down below if you want me to include them in a video, but you can also snap me and all that good stuff too. So um, I'm going to go to Snapchat for the first one. And um, it was, it came to me a little bit ago when I was talking a lot about fitness and I want to keep talking about fitness, but um, this gal asked, why don't we see a lot of plus size girls in the gym? And I think that's kind of a loaded question, so I'm gonna try and answer it as quickly as possible. And this, of course, is just my opinion. Um, I think we don't see a lot of plus size girls in there because I think, honestly, a lot of plus size girls are scared. Um, especially when that whole, um, that Playboy model, whatever, took a picture of that woman and it kind of went all over the internet. Um, I think it's just a scary and intimidating place for a lot of people. And I think it's preventing a lot of plus gals from, you know, taking care of their bodies and stuff. It actually kind of breaks my heart. It's one of the things I'm really passionate about. Um, I don't talk a lot about here, but I'd love to start talking to you guys more about fitness and health and that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I just think they're, I just think they're scared. Gym intimidation is a very real thing regardless of your size. And I think as plus size women, it's a, even a little harder because you feel like you're always being stared at and you feel like you're going to be made fun of. Um, and I think the way to combat that is just realize that everyone at the gym is there for self-improvement. You and the person who's a bodybuilder, they're all there for self-improvement. We're all here for the same reason. We want to be healthy, we want to be fit, and we're here to improve ourselves. Um, and I think if you look at it from that perspective, then um, you know, you'll feel a lot more comfortable going to the gym. So I hope that answers your question. That was a really awesome question. If you guys want me to talk more about fitness and gym and, and that kind of stuff, um, just let me know down below and I'll be sure to do that. Okay. On to the next question. The next question, also from Snapchat, is can you do a detailed video on how to figure out your body type and how to dress it? Yes, girl, I have your back on this. I'm so excited. I've actually been working on a series for six months now. Like, I started planning out the series before I even started YouTube, and I just don't have the resources to put together exactly what I want to do for you guys. I don't want to just sit here and, like, show you pictures and be like, this is what your body type is. I want to show you guys, like, how to measure yourself, how to fall, what category you fall into, and how you can use it your, to your advantage when you're shopping in-store and online. So, yes, that series is coming. I'm really, really excited for it. I just need to get the resources I need, the studio space, all that stuff to kind of show you guys exactly what I want to do with it and it's going to be awesome, I promise. Um, but in the meantime, I hope my lookbooks are helping, especially the pear shaped gals. You guys should be finding that pretty helpful. Um, but yeah, that is definitely coming. So thank you for your question. Okay, the next bunch of questions, look at all these questions, are from Dana. Dana sent these through um, Snapchat and I am just going to run through all of them because I really, I really love them. So this is going to be kind of the Dana show for the next little bit. Um, so her first question is, if you could wear only one outfit for a year, what would you choose? I've actually thought about this a lot, you guys. Like, this is a big, like, when you're a fashion person, you think about that a lot. Um, and it would definitely be a pair of soft, skinny black jeans with slits in the knees, not like completely destroyed, but just slits in the knees, with a pair of point and toe, like two inch heeled booties, um, a white shirt, like a white t shirt, or maybe like a white loose tank top, and then a leather jacket, a scarf, and a Balenciaga bag. Like, hands down, like, just classic black leather, just stress, like a little edge. That's totally my style. So if I could wear that for a year, I would definitely die in the summer. Like it would melt, but hopefully I'll be able to take the jacket off. Um, but that's definitely like my, if I had to pick one thing, that's like, that's it. I wouldn't even like think twice. Um, the next question that she asked is, what was a turning point for you body wise that you decided to say, screw society standards, I'm going to be me and be happy? I wanted to keep this video short, um, but I'm setting my phone down, like the realness is happening. So obviously, um, as a plus woman, I've struggled with body image my for a large portion of my life, I would say my entire life. Um, the first time I really understood that I was different, um, I was like 11 years old and someone called me fat when I was in school and I just didn't really think about it and then I did and then it seemed to be such a big deal. Um, and and so I think at that age I was really impressionable and it just kind of stuck with me um, that there was something wrong with me and 
that was actually a lot around the time where um, because I'm clearly a very loud boisterous person and I like sing and I act and all this stuff um, that that was right around the time where I was told to not do those things um, to not be who I was um, just make people feel comfortable and don't be who you are um, and so I carried that a lot into God even after I got married and stuff and I remember kind of at my lowest point thinking God if I just spent a third of the time that I spend hating myself, even faking being happy, like just trying it, just just try. Just try, try to be cool with it, try to love my body, just try to be happy. Um, that'd be a hell of a lot more productive than what I was doing. So, I, and I remember like that was the day that I decided to be happy, I just decided. I decided that I didn't care anymore. Um, I have um, Hashimoto's disease, and so no matter how much I work out, my weight was never gonna change. Um, it may never ever change, who knows. Um, and my fitness goals are no longer tied to weight anymore, they're tied to health and longevity and living a long life with my husband. Um, so the, the reason I said screw it was because I got tired of living for other people and you know what the weird thing is about people who say stuff to you and about you they get to go home at the end of the day they're not the ones alone in bed in the dark with you you're alone in the dark in bed with you at the end of the day right so those people that are saying crap to you they get to go on with their lives but that stuff sticks to you and it just didn't make sense to me anymore to give these people power over my life and my time they're going on and living their fabulous lives and saying all that crap and not giving me a second thought and i thought god if they're not going to give me a second thought and they're just going to say things to me willy-nilly then first off they're probably wrong like just logically they're going to be wrong um and second of all i'm not just i'm just not going to live my life for them i'm not going to live my life for anyone else because at the end of the day it is only me it is only you and you have to be happy alone. You have to be happy with yourself. If there's something about your body and yourself that you're uncomfortable with, I think you should change it as long as it's a health, healthy change or whatever. Um, but for me, it was a decision. It was just like one night. I think I was about 25 years old and I had been married for a while, six years. And um, I just decided that I was done. I just decided I was done. And that next day, I remember getting up and smiling in the mirror and going, okay, Crystal, you're happy now. This is who you are and feeling like such a phony, but I did it every single day until it wasn't a lie anymore. And then it just became a part of who I am. Um, and I go to therapy and I advocate that everyone goes to talk therapy because especially if you're a plus size and especially if you believe that your weight um, is the product of someone else's opinion, a product of someone else's words that you're wearing as your own, um, going to talk therapy will actually help you move past that to make you realize this is not about, it's what they say is not about you. What they say is about them. It is more to do with what they're going on in their life than what's going on in your life. So, um, God, that was a long answer. I'm sorry, guys. I just, it's something that I think a lot about, especially lately because I've been getting this question a lot. It's like, how do you get confident and stuff? Which I can do a video on that too if you guys want to hear it. I'm happy to tell you guys my journey. Um, but for me, it really was just like a moment where I was like, they're going home. I'm the one by myself and miserable. Why am I giving them that power over me? Who are they to have that power over me? So um, I hope that answers your question, Dana. Um, I'm gonna move on to a lighter question. Um, and the next question is, are you a part of any fandoms outside of your love for clothes? Girl, my nerd is about to show. I love Harry Potter. <laughs> I love, um, I'm a huge makeup junkie. That's one thing I don't talk about on this channel, like kind of at all. And I don't really know why, but I think I'm going to start. I like, I just, this is a haul video I'm about to shoot. Like that was one shopping trip. I am obsessed with makeup. I'm actually, I think when I watch YouTube videos, I like am obsessed with like beauty gurus and stuff like that. Um, so I'm definitely a um, beauty person. I'm definitely a Harry Potter fan. I love eighties music. Um, I love Dr. Who I love, um, God. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a really big nerd. I love nerd stuff. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with Disneyland. You guys know I go all the time. So yeah, I'm definitely a part of other fandoms. I'm not as active in them as I am in, in the fashion community, just because I feel like this is where I can help the most people. Um, but I'm, I'm a huge, huge, ridiculous nerd, like huge nerd. So yeah. Yeah. Gryffindor for life. 
Okay guys, one last question. Um, I don't know if this gal wanted to remain anonymous, so I'm going to just not say her name. And she wrote me, she said, hey Crystal, I wanted to email this to you as I'm not being really open that my husband and I are trying to conceive, but as a plus size girl, I want to look cute when I do get pregnant, but I haven't seen any really cute clothes. Any ideas or help would be appreciated. So, um, as someone who has not been pregnant, um, it's hard for me to speak to this, but I will say that there have been a couple of plus bloggers that have had babies, beautiful babies, that went through the maternity game and slayed it. I will link them down below. Tanisha is one of them, Jay Miranda is another, and then actually Rochella Beauty Curb is currently expecting, and her maternity style is on fleek. Do people still say on fleek? I don't know, but it is popping. She looks great. Um, so one of the places I would suggest that you search for maternity clothes and plus maternity clothes is actually ASOS. Um, it's A-S-O-S. -S. I'll link it down below. They have a maternity section. They have, I believe they even have a plus maternity section. The thing you want to remember is that when you get to the point in your pregnancy where you are showing and you're carrying a lot of weight in your stomach, just opt for jerseys. Um, it depends on your aesthetic too. Like if you like bodycon stuff, girl, rock your bodycon until you're like ready to pop it out because you get a good jersey fabric that'll stretch with you and just just rock it, just rock it. Um, but I think, you know, flowy tops, things that um, are empire waist or A-line are always really nice because they're swingy. You can pair them with, um, you know, skinny jeans and they'll always look really pretty and chic. I think the thing too to um, pull off a really cool pregnancy style is to just take what you normally like to do and just size up on things, make it a little slouchier. Um, so like if you're our jeans and t-shirt kind of girl, stick with your skinnies, get like a nice slouchy top, like t-shirt that kind of hangs off the shoulder and maybe pair it with like a little other jacket or something. You want to be comfortable obviously above all. Um, if you are currently pregnant and you're, it's in the summer and it's hot, maxi dresses are always a great alternative. Very often they are either um, like kind of the one I got from Lovesick where it was like a really nice stretch jersey material. That would be great because it's going to grow with you. Um, so I think the main thing when you're pregnant and you're looking for cool maternity styles is fabrics that are stretchy, pants that are comfortable, and layers. Um, you can do leggings and a black t-shirt and then put a really cool kimono over it and all of a sudden you're like a totally hip mama um, and don't be afraid to still show off your body if that's what your style is if you are like I am a plus size Kardashian girl rock it and that's another thing too if you have a celebrity that you're really like you love her style and she got pregnant look at what she did and then try and find things that will also kind of work for you um, but above all be comfortable layer light layers are good and i just want to say that i know you guys are keeping it on the dl i do hope you get pregnant because clearly this is something that you want and i'm wishing you guys all the luck in the world if there are any other mamas down in the comments below that have been through the process of having a baby and have some awesome resources for maternity plus wear please leave them down below for this gal i think she'd really appreciate it and i'll also um leave some more sites that i find down in the in the description box so you can check those out as well um but i really like light layers for um for maternity wear and then of course stretchy fabrics and just show off that baby and um, you're making a life so just just own it that's just so that's just so damn cool <laughs> that is so damn cool okay guys so that is it for this Q&A video I hope you enjoyed it I know it's a little different than what I normally do but maybe you got some stuff out of it if there's anything you'd like for me to elaborate on please leave a comment down below and if you have any questions for me and you like Q&A videos just let me know down below and I will film another one because this was super fun I'm really feeling my like spangly gray background with my like chambray top like I feel very mono monochrome hipster cool but anyway um i am on my way to the airport i'm actually kind of running late so i need to wrap it up so thanks so much for spending your time with me today you guys are really really appreciated don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already i love your faces Mwah! i'll see you next time bye yeah.